Welcome to our lecture online and here's another example of how interference of light could occur and this is the example of glass plates. Uh, let's say that we have two glass plates, they're placed on top of one another but on one end we place a small hair between the two plates which lifts up that side just a little bit which means there's going to be an air gap between the two plates that gets wider as we go to the right. We have kind of the same phenomena as we see with a thin film that light will go through the, through the first glass plate, reflect off the top boundary of the plate between the plate and the air. Some will go through, reflect off the, the boundary between the air and the second glass plate and get reflected back. And the observer will see the result of those two rays coming back. Of course, there's other things going on there, but we're only taking a look at those two particular reflections. You can, of course, see that if those two reflections are in phase, then the uh, viewer will see a bright light coming through and if the two reflected beams are out of phase like a half wavelength or one and a half or two and a half wavelengths out of phase then the observer will see nothing he'll see like what we call a dark fringe and so let's say that there are 12 of these dark fringes visible to the observer the question then is from that can you determine how thick or how yeah how thick the human hair is that was placed between the two plates and so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, well, the extra distance traveled by the second ray compared to the first ray is always going to be twice the thickness between the two plates. Of course, that thickness gets wider as we go on, like so. And we also have to take a look and see if there are phase shifts um, on the boundaries. And when we look at the very top um, boundary there, there's not going to be a phase shift because the rays coming from glass to air, that's from a higher to a lower index of refraction, so the answer is no there. But at the bottom phase, it goes from air to glass, so from a lower index of refraction to a greater index of refraction, part of it, of course, is transmitted. The answer is yes, uh, there is a phase shift there. So we can see then, since they're not the same, without traveling any extra distance, there's already a half, the, a half wavelength of a phase shift. So for no extra distance traveled, no extra distance traveled, the, the uh, phase difference the phase difference is equal to lambda over 2. And we can say lambda because the light travels through air there, so we don't have to worry about the index of refraction. So you can see then, if there's no extra distance traveled, the two beams will destructively interfere because one of them will have phase shifted by half a wavelength and the other one has not. So there's a phase difference of a half a wavelength, which means at the very beginning, when the gap is just minuscule, just barely greater than zero, there will be destructive interference because any light being reflected off the top surface and the bottom surface, since there's really no extra distance traveled by the second one, but the second one does experience a phase shift where the first one doesn't, they will already differ by half a wavelength. So, the difference, the path length difference over here is zero, the path length difference there would be 2t, the path length difference there would be how much? Well, since the gap is twice as big here as it is over there, then um, Actually, that's probably not a good way to express it. Hang on a second. A better way to say it is this. The extra distance traveled over there, so let's, let's call this uh, fringe 1, fringe 2, fringe 3, fringe 4, all the way up to fringe 12. So for fringe 1, or yeah, for fringe 1, you can say that the extra distance traveled will be equal to zero wave of, well, zero wavelengths, right? Zero lambda. And for the um, second fringe, for the first fringe, so for the second fringe, we can say that the extra distance traveled is equal to a whole wavelength. So each time the extra distance traveled is a whole wavelength, the two rays being reflected will be out of phase since one experiences a phase shift and the other one does not. So for an integer number of wavelength difference in the extra distance traveled, you always have a condition where there will be destructive interference. And again, because one ray is phase shifted and the other one is not. So when we go to the 12th fringe, the extra distance traveled at the 12th fringe must be equal to 11 lambdas. Each time we have see another fringe, the extra distance travel is an additional wavelength. And of course, if we then add the additional phase difference of that lambda over 2 from the phase shift, then the extra distance travel has an effect of being 11 and a half wavelengths and therefore you'll see destructive interference. Which means at the 12th fringe, right exactly where the hair is at, 
The axial distance travel is 11 lambda, and that has to equal twice the thickness of this gap, which then would be equal to the diameter of, or the thickness of the gap then would be equal to the diameter of the hair. So we're going to combine these two together, and we can say that twice the thickness of the air gap equals 11 lambda. And so then we find out what the thickness is equal to. So the thickness is equal to 11 lambda divided by 2. And lambda, okay, now what kind of light are we looking at? Well, we're looking at visible light, let's say sunlight. And the average wavelength of sunlight is probably about 500 nanometers. So we'll use that for our example here. So we use 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And we divide that by 2. And that will be the thickness between the two glass plates where the hair is at, which then also will be the diameter of the hair. So we have 500 e to the 9 minus times 11 divided by 2 equals, and we get 2.75 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. So it would be 2.75 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, which is 2.75 micrometers. Now, I didn't quite look up what the actual thickness of a human hair is, and it might be very different from our results, so don't go looking up in the dictionaries or in the encyclopedia and say, oh, he's all wrong, that's not the right answer. In this particular example, whatever hair that is, that would be the correct thickness. That would be the methodology. And again, as a quick review, the extra distance traveled is always going to be twice the thickness of this air gap, which of course gets bigger and bigger and bigger as we go to the right. Because of the fringes, we can see that the condition changes. For every fringe, the path length difference will be an additional wavelength. So for the first fringe, it's zero wavelength because there's no d distance between the two. And they're already a half a wavelength out of phase because of the phase difference caused by the phase shift. But for the second fringe, it's one lambda. The third fringe is two lambda. The fourth fringe is three lambda. For the twelfth fringe, it'll be 11 lambda. And so the extra distance travel will be 11 lambda. The extra distance travel is twice the thickness of the air gap, so the air gap has to be 11 lambda divided by 2, and that will then be the thickness of the hair that we place between them. It's actually not a bad way to measure the thickness of very thin, small little things by putting like two glass plates together like that and counting the number of fringes. Actually, would be a good way to do it. But that's how you work with glass plates.